if there ever was kind of a throwaway year, it's this one. But uh, I don't know. Maybe if we uh, sell some pieces, we'll make the playoffs because that's what's happened every other time. I highly doubt it. I think we're too far back, actually. Way too far back. 12 points, in fact. It's just not happening. But that that's okay. Um, so I saw a lot of kind of comments and controversy about the coach I have. There is a larger reason that I got him just it's it wasn't really team performance based was the reason uh, the reason I got this guy. The main reason that I got this guy was to try to get chemistries up because uh, as I as people have been telling me chemistries will help with growth. I don't know how true that is, but that's what I went for. So I went I focused on a coach with good teaching and who could provide us with some good chemistry. Now staff chemistry isn't great. And that has a bit to do with uh, the difference of their styles and such. Two physical coaches and balanced one and offensive one. But the, the thing is, everyone's coming off contract this next year. So we will kind of uh, decide our style um, in the future. I might hold on to Prust and go for like a balance. I, I don't like to be a pure offensive team. I like to have a balance. I think that's usually the best. You can get good guys scoring and hopefully lock things down on defense. But uh, yeah, this was kind of just a, uh, we, were, uh, we, were, we were trying some things. This was basically me trying to get like time to jumpstart some of the growth, essentially, uh, based on what you guys have been said. It wasn't strictly for performance. I wanted better performance, but I think the biggest thing is that we just don't have the overalls. I don't think it's the coach so much as that we have an 82 overall centering the second line. March so is only an 86, 85 now. Savoie, I mean, he's capable. The good news is Savoie, Randy Noob, these guys are growing well. They're looking good. Uh, they're big pieces. Squire should be fine. Vaborny's even looking qu quite good, too. So, for the most part, growth has been good. Jaron Myers is. Pajot is a little worrying to me. You know, I might, while well, I was thinking about doing this switch, maybe just give him more, less ice time. I might do this again. Jaron Myers can use a bit more ice time now. But, uh, yeah, and unfortunately with Haz, I just don't know. He might just be a bust at this point, which sucks. He was drafted 16th overall, low franchise. You're hoping to get, like, a top four out of him at the very least. Don't even know if we're getting top six out of him. H hard to say, but uh, I'm not going to trade him. I know people are saying trade him, but here's the thing, man. I, I can't trade him, like, for his value at all. There's you got This guy was drafted... You know, at the, what, the first, first, second draft, he's 22 now. He's never panned out. He's barely making in the NHL now. Look at the value he still has. Value is very, kind. it's still very bad in this game. There, it really needs to have a lot more factors into it. His value has only decreased slightly. And he's now lost, like, after four years of growth, he's only grown seven overall. So, I mean, that's part of the reason I'm not trading him for this value. If I do trade him, it won't be for anywhere near this value. So, that's just how it is because I think that's a, a bit silly. Now, that might seem like a contradiction. I'll have to break this down because of a guy like Coleman who was drafted in the third round. I don't mind trading him for near this value. Number one, it's decreased a lot from like a medium elite that you would find in the first round. Second reason being is that... He still has a lot of time to jump up and could become a second liner, which is, and well, has a good chance to be a second liner, which is what this value kind of reflects, right? A few second liner. You look at a guy like Glass, that value is pretty, like almost identical. Like that is, you know, a solid ish second liner. So that's kind of the reasoning behind why I don't mind that for that when they're super young, you know, as he is and stuff like that. Like he, he still has an excellent chance. But, uh, if I were to trade has, it would be for way less and, and might as well just hold on to him, honestly. And just keep trying to see what happens. You know, hopefully he gets a nice jump this year. Who the hell knows? But uh, if he doesn't, then he doesn't. And might not be anything great. But it is what it is. Anyway, so that's kind of the breakdown of what I'm been, what I was trying to do this year. Why I did the things I did. And... Uh, Yes, I'm disappointed with the result. I, I really thought that with the combinations and the shooters and the passers and et cetera and so forth, that we would probably could have at least a better result. I didn't like I wanted to be like what we have been the rest of the time, just a bubble team, but with a different look, you know, like 
I thought the combinate the player combinations would work to our advantage, such especially with Squires up there. I was expecting to get like 30, 30 goals out of him. I mean, he might still get there, but like he's he's just too too far behind. I mean, with with what we had, I I don't know. I thought we can get a bit more out of him. It just hasn't happened. So it is what it is. As I said, not the biggest of deals. It is a bit of a letdown, but the good news is we have gotten some solid growth. Getting some good growth in the uh, um, in like the in in the system and and as well. Pajot, we got him to a really good contract extension, so I want him to grow. The, the unfortunate part is he didn't get a jump. Um, over the over the off season, I don't think. I think he was at eighty two. That sucks. We could, we really need him to get to at least mid eighties if we want to use him. And if not, he's going to be tr become a trade trade piece but that's also the good thing with that contract it is a very good contract so that's at least a positive so hopefully he can continue to grow but yeah I'm a bit worried about him but worried about has obviously Jaron Myers is looking like he'll be fine but yeah we still need we, we need true top two I mean we haven't had that we that's what we're that's what we've been building towards essentially we're hoping Pajos and has would be our top pairing that's not looking like it's coming out might have to be Jaron Myers and someone else a lefty DFD we're gonna have and we can we're gonna look to draft perhaps that other righty guy as a two AD or whatever he is and if he wants to be a shutdown we could ch change to that it depends on what Pajot becomes essentially like that it really depend on if Pajot is gonna be you know a guy that we want to use and it's just a good thing to do because has is it's looking more and more like has is sort of not going to be even become a top four so that's the reason I want to draft that guy in the top five the lone defenseman so we'll probably try to hedge our bets to do that yeah we'll probably let March so go we'll move tuck up and I'll probably put Krebs onto the third line Chemistry wise, not looking solid, but it is what it is. Uh, it's not too many games left of the season. Okay. So that's kind of the plan here. And I think if we're going to trade for, you know, if we're looking for a lefty kind of top two guy, defensive defenseman, that, that's a trade to be made at the draft, I think. When we have more, like, we'll, we'll have a lot of good value. We'll have value in picks. We'll kind of know what everything is. We'll have an idea if if we want to sacrifice Pajel for that guy. You know, we'll have we'll have a lot more options at the draft. We'll have set in stone values essentially for all the picks. So that's kind of my my thinking right now. So I think I want to go for that trade I was thinking of doing with Vancouver. I really think that's that's I mean it's almost picture perfect. They they're listed a champion team. They're doing horribly. And they want to give up stuff. They should not make the playoffs by any means. The pick may lose value, but we have to trade Marcheseau now. Unless we sign him to an extent. But he's going to lose value. He's just going to continue to lose value. So it's got to be now. So him and that... Uh, I passed him. Him and Coleman as a starting point. We can retain on March or so since it's just this last bit. We need to take back a skater. It can be anyone. I don't really mind. The value looks like it could be good like that since they want to give up what they uh, what we're asking for. I wonder if they have like a low elite or something. Yeah, they got put Coles in, but I don't know about him. They don't want to give him up either, so probably not. Don't know what this guy is. Yeah, I'll just I'll just take something back. We will find plenty of our own stuff. We don't need to look for anything of theirs. There we go. This guy's actually on the block. One year. AHL, no extension. That is league approved now. So I think we're going to go ahead and do this. There we go. All right. Uh, yeah, we just got to do the lines here. 
And we could call up someone. But I don't think I'm gonna. Listen, move up Krebs. And... Okay, I will go in here. That's fine. Alright, so we need someone else to jump in here. You know, I might move... I might actually move Squires up here. Just to try to get him some more points. <laughs> uh, Savo, I can't really take face-offs. That's the only downside. No one really can take face-offs there. Krebs, Krebs technically can. He's not great at it. Who else want to put in here? I guess I can go with Viborny. Probably the best option. Yes, sir. Plus three still. Not anything amazing, but hey, we'll take it. I might switch Myers and Pajot here. Probably. Uh, where I'm still... Uh, I'm still trying to get... Yeah, I don't know. Let's just move him back towards more of his role. <laughs> Let's just do that. All right, and that should be good. Tuck doesn't like the second line. Otherwise, we'd have a plus three because he's a power forward there. Tuck is looking like a third liner here long term, which I don't mind. I can give him two solid deals to be in that capacity. It'll all depend on what, what if he kind of fits in and if he's a good fit for there. I'll see what happens, but... Didn't, uh, didn't pan out super, super well. Okay, I think that's about it. Oh, we are under cap. I think we're going to be okay, though. I don't think it matters here. I guess it won't matter after the deadline, because it's not really giving me any negatives here, so... I guess we'll be fine. <laughs> we'll probably just finish off the rest of this year tanking as we go. Tanking as we do. Uh, I say that, but you never know. Um, let me just actually... Oops, that's player morale. I was actually going to see what I have in terms of pick. This will be. I'll just take a look at this. Do we have anyone? Disgruntled. No one's even on presence or leader yet. Interesting. Um, let's look at total picks here. We can only have nine. If we don't have it, yeah, we don't have a second, so that's good. We actually have ten picks, so we have too many. I have to trade something away at the draft. You know what? I'll just hold on. I can't I can't gain any more for this year, but we'll just I'll try to remember that I have to trade at least one at the draft. So I'll I'll try to remember to do that. Because we were thinking of using some of the value from a pick to make a trade at the draft anyway. So that'll probably be the thing we do. So I'll hold off on that. Just maybe remind me there that I have to trade one of those picks. I can't draft with all 10. Them's the rules. All right. So now our salary's back up there. Interesting. Okay, whatever. <laughs> all right. So that is going to be the trade down. Like kind of a quicker one, but I know. Do I? I don't think I have any more extensions. I think we took care of all of that at the beginning. Uh, oh, hell. Oh, yeah, Vaborny. That's right. He wanted that silly deal. Does he want a better deal now? Yeah. I might do that for Vaborny as well. Because that is going to be an insanely good deal. And, yeah. That is five mil flat for eight years. Yes. He He's looking like he'll become at least a second liner. So already that's going to be a steal of a deal. If he becomes even more than that, all the more better. We're going to save so much money. Let's do that. Five mil for eight years. Roy, I'm going to hold on to. I like him. I'd like to get him to two years, so I will. Do something like that. Actually save a bit of money with him. White Cloud's a bit disgruntled right now, which isn't great, but he's a depth guy. Yeah, I don't really care. Whatever, dude. And all right, that that's it. Okay, so there we go. Bit of a quicker trade deadline here. Are you guys ready to make the playoffs? <laughs> It'll probably happen. Did I check growth here at the trade deadline? 
I feel like I did, but I'm going to – let's see if the numbers – I don't think I did, actually. This looks much different. Raining noob. The accuracy – oh, the power's even getting better. Yeah, your shot's actually getting filthy. Not as crazy, crazy good as you see some people, but, yeah, this is actually good for a sniper to have his shot growing like that. Face-offs got better as well. Yeah, I think this is all new. Look at the – oh, yeah, good stuff there. Patrick Kane, <clears throat> sorry, being propped up by stat growth. He will continue to have that this year. So we'll be fine with him, even though he's now in the top six. We actually shouldn't see much decline out of him at all because he should actually sustain himself with his numbers this year. So both the years we have Kane for should be just fine. Glass actually got some more growth, which is kind of crazy. Thing is, his offensive awareness isn't moving. This is why the guy in my eyes is a defensive third liner. He's just a third liner, third line center. Look at that. Look at the face offs, too. He's really good. Savoie got some decent growth. Myers as well. Look at that awareness. 97. Defense. Jesus. His defensive awareness keeps jumping up, too. He's a smart guy, apparently. Jaron Myers. I think that's similar to what it was before. Squires has got some growth, too. So he is growing. We didn't like completely stunt him or anything. And he is, he was only 18 to 19. Sometimes they don't grow a huge amount in their first year at 18, 19. And that's just kind of what happens. But yeah, the issues here obviously being Haz and Pajot. Where's Pajot? Wait a sec. Oh, wait. He, uh, this is what? Stat, no, stat minuses. That's right. That's part of the reason that's kind of holding him back. He should probably be 83. It's got stat minuses, which is bad. That's probably not going to be erased by this year. So hopefully he gets a nice enough jump and then we can get him to have a decent enough year. Who knows, though? It's a bit rough. Oops. I didn't even check in the system. What am I doing? Yeah, I feel like I didn't check. Maybe I did check this in the last episode, but I'm seeing stuff that I didn't see before. I feel like so. It says Uncle Skoden hasn't grown, but he clearly has this year. Started at an 80. There's no way you get to 82 just from morale, I don't think. Yeah, I I, I think it did that erasing thing. I think it did that to a few guys, because didn't we have a 20-plus around here? I feel like we did. I feel like we're not seeing growth here. All right, anyway, Tiny Montoya is up to 80 overall. Ooh, he's looking good. All right. A couple guys down here not looking so hot. That's all right, though. Okay, so... Now we'll continue simming here. And, uh... <laughs> Yeah, watch us win out the season and make the playoffs. That's all I'm going to say. Look, we got that Vancouver pick, so we should have a good shot. The fuck? <laughs> Vancouver made another trade. They shift March or so and Tyler Myers out for Lindholm and Furland. Okay. Interesting. Vaborny accepted extension, as did Nicholas Roy. Good. And we're going to finish off the season here. So I'm still hoping Ca Vancouver has a terrible end of the year. Uh, God damn it. Here come the injuries. I'm just going to stuff in that one guy I picked up. Because <laughs> I don't care. Arvid Kostmer. Win. Win. What did I say? What did I say, guys? We're going to do better. <laughs> we're going to make the playoffs here. Traded away one of our top sixes, which means we're guaranteed to make the playoffs. Let's go. Another win. Watch out. Another win. Getting back to 500. Another win. <laughs> this game is so stupid. Oh, Peyton Krebs made a glass. Confirmed. Let's get that 60-something Kostmar in there again. He's a secret. He is the secret to success. Let's go Vegas. Oh, I hate saying that. 
Alrighty. This is the guy, man. This is the guy we want. Got another sniper back here, too. Alright. Do some more scouting. Mark Ha- Oh my god! It's not spelled correctly, but... Mark Hamill. We found it. Finally, every time I see Hamill, I say Mark Hamill. And this time we got him. Beautiful. So yeah, I'm going to scout a lot of this first round due to the... Oh, that's a Polish name for sure. Hell yeah. Due to the sheer volume of uh, picks we have. They likely won't be far past the 20 mark, but I'm still going to scout a bit past that. Just in case there's a steal or something. Just in case we get lucky. You never know. Probably not. But hey, I'm scouting anyway. I want them. I want the info. You're being scouted. Cool. Alright. I'm going to do this guy out of spite. Because all the rest of you guys are being scouted. There we go. Alright, elites. Or low elites. Let's look. Or maybe a couple. The one guy would would have wanted to scout is already being scouted. So probably not, but... Whatever. Put that in there. Bunch of goalies right there. Alright, come on now. Where are they at? We better have one. There we are. We got one. Way back there. A sniper. Not the greatest of player types. So here's a lefty DFD. But it's a low elite. So again, these aren't... These aren't those top twos. And we probably can't afford to wait for them all. Although, his, his ranking is actually kind of good. His ETA should be three years. So it's... But still. Ah. It's, that'll probably take him five years to get to the top two, minimum, right? So, unless, you know, he'd have to grow like a weed. And we, you just can't count on that. These guys are all projects. We're going to have to make a trade for that top two guy, most likely. Which is very hard to find. A very, very good top two shut down D on the left-hand side. So I don't know what we'll do, but we'll we'll figure it out. We'll have the uh, we'll have the we'll have the assets necessary to acquire them no matter what. So we'll overextend. We'll do whatever it takes, but hopefully we're able to draft that righty guy as well. This is a lot slower going than I thought it would be to turn this team around. I I, I figured I don't know. Maybe it's not. I, I guess the first few years being as bad as they were makes it feel like we, we've been rebuilding or retooling for longer than we have. I guess we have been retooling, but like I thought we could be more competitive in those first couple years. Then every time we weren't, I'm like, okay, let's let's tank, and then <laughs> we don't do that. And Yeah, I don't know. I think next if we don't make the playoffs next year, that's that's bad. Next year, we need to be a playoff team, I think. And I think we'll have the tools necessary, get the growth necessary to do so. It's all about next year at this point, so that's the look. All right, almost done here. Just one more little section, then we get back to the Simmon. All right, oh, wrong one. There we are, a couple more. Okay. Are we going to continue to win? We finally lose again. And we lose again, but we get a point out of it. Yeah, I think we're too far out, but the game's trying. It's trying its best here. <laughs> Look how much we're winning. Scandella on waivers. I was thinking of claiming him, <clears throat> but that didn't make any sense. I was like, oh, I'll just make Vancouver. All right, beat Vancouver. I don't care about anything else. Damn, they got hella better, too. Shit. You figured they would, but I was hoping for not as good as they did. Peyton Krebs is back. 72, 22, top nine. Uh, his defensive awareness sucks. I was going to say, this guy isn't half bad, and then I took a look at his defensive stats. Like, okay, yeah, he is. I thought we all got extremely lucky right there and may, may have gotten a serviceable death guy or fourth line of the future, but nope. <laughs> that defense is trash. 
Of course, we win those games, but we can't beat that one against Vancouver. So obviously, we missed the playoffs. Canucks missed the playoffs as well. That's good. We're actually lower than the Canucks, so we technically lost value by acquiring their pick, but we also gave up an aging guy and a prospect who's still kind of a wait and see in many ways. He just might not simply grow, you know, but he should be a second liner for them in the future. Should be. Did I, did the regular season ending thing pop up already? I don't know. I it must have. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the playoffs already started. Okay. All right, so let's wrap things up for us. Patrick Kane had a tremendous year, 104 points. Payne, happy to pay him. Goals for 3.05, goals against 3.37. Power play was good. Penalty kill wasn't. I don't think we're going to win and get into the top five. I was kind of hoping for Vancouver to do that, but they decided to do amazing. They only lost five games in regulation, and they won 14. <laughs> See, yep, that's that's what happens. Oh, boy. Yeah. Anyway, personal stats. Let's see how uh, people did on our team. Oh, Stone actually was point per game as well. Reigning new, man. 80 points. 44 goals, 36 assists. Got a chip on his shoulder, not winning the Calder last year. Savoie, almost 60 points. He was a rookie this year, though, right? Or did he play fully? No, yeah, he's a rookie this year. Yeah. I don't think he'll be up in the... Anyway, Squires, 42 points, 25 goals. Not bad as a rookie year. You, you, we want to maybe more out of him, 50 points, 30 goals, but whatever. It is what it is. Vaborny did okay. But yeah, all in all, not enough points being scored. Yep. Minus is everywhere. Goalies. Bennington's save percentage was at least decent. Benoit. Got a lot of learning to do. Didn't do... Bleh, he just, yeah, just didn't have a good year. Again, we're not a great team. We don't have a great defensive core either, so... But, yeah. Let's see. Oops, let's just go this way. Let's see how we our guys stacked up to the rest of the league. McKinnon once again leading the way. But Patrick Kane was in second, man. We had the second top score on our team. Patrick Kane with 104 points. But McKinnon, once again, 113 points. Goals-wise, is he going to win that again? Yes, he does. Mitchell Richardson. Who the fuck? Oh, okay. Oh, God, is he a rookie? I think so. <laughs> Assist leader. Huberto was 68. Kane had 67 tied with Cheery. Okay. Plus minuses. Oh, God, Denisenko. Oh, okay. Hasn't got super good, but he's he's playing with Barkov and Huberto, so that's that's good for him. Let's see the snippers. None of them. Sexton's up there, but it's got to be McKinnon, wherever the hell he is. Cause yeah, he doesn't shoot as much as these guys. I'm, I can't even find him. He's way down there. Uh, Zabanajad, ten game winners out of thirty goals. Yep, most clutch. I don't care about Kyle Connor right here with eight and nineteen. I'm just going to give it to Zabanajad because Kyle Connor's garbage. Just kidding. Uh, power play goals. McKinnon with 20. Yeah, th only 307 shots. Ridiculous. I guess Marchand might have been a deadlier sniper if we're going by percentages. But I usually have it over 300 shots. I don't know. I don't know. I just I just, I just look. Uh, McKinnon still, yep, led in points as well. Oh, excuse me, shorties. Wow, okay, Turcotte. Six shorthanded goals, six shorthanded points, 88 points on the season. Shen with eight shorty points. Okay. Defensively. Sexton did pretty good. Larkin did pretty good. Those guys are maybe being considered. How about some better faceoff percentages? There is Patterson up there. Might be being considered. Doesn't hit a lot, so lower on the totem pole. Interesting. Different guys than you might. Tay, okay. Taves, Couturier is still. Okay. You got Taves and Couturier still up there. So, we'll see what happens. I'm not too sure. That'll be a tight race either way. Uh, Kale McCarr. 79 points, Kale McCarr. 
Hold on. I'm looking. Where's Quinn Hughes? Oh my god. Oh, oh gee. Oh, what a shame. What a shame. At least this at least the game got this right though. Kale McCarr, the better player. Better career. Yeah. That'll happen. Okay, so Kale McCarr led the way. Might even win the Norris here. I don't see anyone who should steal it from him in that range. He's got the more ice time. Yeah, he hit less than them, blocked less shots than them. You can make a solid argument for OEL. Giveaway takeaway ratios and much better. Hits were good, blocked shots were more. Less ice time. Less plus minus. Way less points, so that's tough. You could make an argument for OEL, but I think it's it's got to be McCarr. So that's likely who it's going to be. All right, goalies. Let us see. Uh-oh, is Bob up there? Yeah, but also Mrazic. Mrazic, Hart, that's got to be a tie. Save percentage and goal, goals against, that's got to be a tie. Very similar record types, too, so they're on similar type teams. So Mrazic, Hart, for sure. Mrazic, Hart is who I'm saying. Olmark's okay, but that goals against is too bad. And he's got, again, a similar record to the other two guys. But Brovsky played a lot more games. Was on a much better team, though, and his save percentage just didn't stack up to Hart. And Mrazic, and his goals against was even worse than Mrazic. So I think it's just Hart. And Mrazic has a two-way tie here for the goaltenders. You guys let me know, but that's I'm pretty firm on that one. That, well, that one looks pretty clear to me. Rooks. Matherin. Oh, you're making your... Oh, okay. Anthony breaks our hearts. Breaks Savoie's heart. Breaks our hearts again. With uh, his his uh, rookie year. 64 points. 28 goals. 36 assists to take home that Calder. Congrats there, bud. Wasn't meant to be for Savoie. There was Squire. So he was up in the top five at least. So good for you. So two top five rookies. That's what you want to see. Not going to see any goalies be good enough to take anything away. But I'm looking at him anyway. Dean Vodka. You had your rookie. Wow, they played you 61 games. Very sorry about that. 83. You know what? You're going to get to a solid mid-80. But there was your rookie year. You know what? You had a bad rookie year in the age. Well, no, no, you didn't. When you got more games played, you did. You had a good job playing 11 games. You got 33 games. Kind of were bad. You had 50 games. You looked good. They put you into the starting role in the NHL. Didn't quite have a 90 save percentage. You looked like you're on not a good, not a great team at least. Rough rookie year for Dean. But uh, you know what? Maybe you're going to get up there. You never know. All right. Fun stats now. We got hits. Only one guy over, two, over 200. And that's Tamo time and fights. No one hit 10. Wilson with 8. Moran with 8. Gudash with 5. Mike D up there with 4. Uh-oh. We're losing it here. We're losing the physicalness. Blame Batman. Alright, so there that is as well. And it's a great way to stay in shape. Yeah, Montreal didn't like make the playoffs weirdly or anything. Anyway, quick look, quick look at the playoff tree. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to check progress supports as well since we're at the end of the season. I'm just I got to keep checking on it. I want to keep looking, see if anything moved, shifted, changed with the wins. Did Randy Noob grow more? Or was that already at 23? I feel like that's all the same. What? No, Savoie has got to be different. He's at 87. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Hard to say. Yeah, that, that slap shot power went up more. Yeah, the slap shot power went up more. All right. So, yeah, we did have a bit more growth there. How about you, Jaron Myers? Wow, just growing it exceptionally evenly in kind of everything you want him to do. <laughs> Perfect. Looking solid, and unfortunately, Pajot is all stat, all stat minuses. Unfortunate. <gasps> Yay! Has! 
Oh my god, we did it! <laughs> he grew slightly. He grew slightly. Now he needs a jump. We, he needs a jump and get kick started. Let's go. Project make has good again. <laughs> we did it. Alright, so oh my goodness. Mr. Second Rounder looking like he's ready to crack the NHL soon. Lower awareness, that's okay though. He should have, he's got a decent shot. Oh, his face-offs suck. Damn it. I need, I need like a plus eight in the face-offs. This guy grew like a weed though. I, I'm get, he's, he looks like a two-way guy to me. Low, decent growth. Morgan, he's not, I mean, he grew well, but too little too late. Campoli, that's a guy who might be able to pan out as a top six or later. Zanata, okay. Montoya. Pretty much where he was before. Let's go by this. Yeah, good. Everyone kind of grown that we need to. Clear he didn't. Uncle Skoden says he didn't, but he's, he's NHL next year anyway. He should get a solid jump from the kind of year he had this, this past year. Yeah, 72 points, 75 games played. They should be in the playoffs. I mean, that's a pretty impressive AHL debut. To make the transition from CHL playing with boys to, to into the AHL playing with men, I mean, that's not an easy transition. But Uncle Skoden is a beast. So there you go. Good job. Bullis didn't grow either, but he's okay. We shall be fine. I forgot we had Chase on for this entire year. I don't even think he played anywhere. It's all right. Didn't need to. Okay, for the most part, I'm happy with our growth. Definitely. For the most part, I'm very happy with the growth. We did get has to grow a bit there. And as I exclaimed, you heard the quality of my voice. <laughs> so it's been a bit rough. A lot of casting lately. Late night gaming with friends. A lot of, a lot of yelling and screaming. All right, anyway, a bit of a shorter episode today, but that is what it is. No playoffs to deal with. No uh, squeaking in by the skin of our teeth and losing in the first round. Joy, joy, we're going to have a chance at the lottery. I don't think we're going to, I don't know. I still really think I should target that guy in the top five. I'm hoping we squeak into the top five somehow. We'll see. We have three chances to do so pretty much, so hope for the best. All right, guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to leave that like, and I'll see you in the next one.